Hey guys, today I want to talk about NAS and encryption. It's kind of a buzzword, it's very hacker, ooh, sneaky, sneaky, but encryption on NAS is actually fairly standard. The majority of NASs that have been released in the last few years all arrive with encryption options as standard. And unless you live in certain, shall we say, politically questionable areas of the world right now, encryption is basically something a lot of us take for granted. And with its, you know, quite negative effects on system performance, all too often none of us really utilise encryption on not just our NAS, but any kind of host PC or Mac client system. But encryption is actually a huge, huge deal, and it doesn't have the impact that you think it does. But it all depends, one, how you want to use encryption, and two, where encryption is going to be most effective for you because there's lots of ways to take advantage of it without taxing your system too much but before we get into any further detail what is encryption well nice and simple it's pretty much what you think it is with a few bells and whistles encryption is when you have a large area or a small area of data that isn't natively visible so you can't really go into it with a windows file explorer on your mobile phone and just browse through it it won't let you because the file has been disguised it's had all of its um zeros and ones completely disguised and moved around to a point when the file is completely corrupted and impossible to see. And in order to see it, you need to have the key. You need to have a cipher that will show you exactly how A means B. There, zero means one, and basically decode this file for visibility. Now, in terms of NAS, encryption, as I say, has been around for a long time. Traditionally, it's either going to be two kinds in 2019 and 2020. It is AES 256 bit encryption that's either standard AES, advanced encryption standard, or the more efficient AES NI, advanced encryption standard new instruction. And what that means in real terms is the data on standard AES will need more system resources to create the encryption and to disguise the, uh, the data in question. Whereas with AES NI, because it's a more efficient system, it utilizes less system performance, uh, memory and CPU power to maintain that encryption. That is when you're accessing data to um, unencrypt and decrypt, uh, sorry, uh, decrypt and re-encrypt uh, re that data. Now, when it comes to AES NI encryption, you will get it on most modern Intel CPUs. So anything from a Celeron and above, you'll maybe notice, particularly in the latest generation, that AES NI hardware encryption is available straight away. But this is the first point of interest, because when you encrypt, it's something you have to decide very early on. Because depending on the brand you go for, if you want to enable encryption, you have to enable that option before you've written so much as a single byte of data because as soon as you've done that you can't enable it encrypting data will effectively wipe and reinitialize the storage area you have in mind for those of you that saw my unlocking video on sed drives you'll know that in some cases encryption happens right at the point of access but there are many, many instances where encryption actually takes place later on in the food chain of read-write data. And therefore, ways in which um, you can uh, stop system performance being too badly affected by encryption become readily available. Anyone that's ever looked at performance benchmarks presented from any of these NAS brands, from Sonology to QNAP to Acer Store and more, will show you that they show two kinds of read-write speed. The first one is standard windows random file access and the other one will be encrypted and you'll always see the encrypted transfers will be a mite lower and that's because of those cpu resources that get consumed so carrying on looking at my notes very very quickly what are the negatives of encryption well first and foremost there's that business that it has to be done at the outset you can't retroactively encrypt if you didn't encrypt on day one it's no good to you unless you want to restart and move the data elsewhere, encrypt that area of storage and bring the data back. The second thing, of course, is that performance dip, which is a real pain in the A for some of you out there who are using some of those Realtek CPUs that can't really afford to stretch the power and ability of that NAS. Next, it's the ability of the encryption key. When you do set up an encryption, you'll almost always immediately download the encryption key because you'll need this 
if the drives are ever stolen. Now, generally, when you're interacting with the NAS with your login, you'll be able to access the data straight away every single time. But if you try to access that data in another way using a third-party browser, such as Windows Explorer or Mac's Finder program, or you've removed the disks from the NAS and you're trying to access them externally, you will need that downloaded key to get in. Because that downloaded key is the alternative to a password. And if you've lost that, you've lost it all. So that can be one of the ways in which it can be a real pain encryption unless it's done properly. Don't get me wrong, it's for mission critical data that you can't afford to lose, but at the same time, if you can't afford to lose it, don't lose the damn key. Now, when it comes to the performance dips and security and stuff like that, there is the last area of encryption on NAS that for me is probably the most important. Because if you are considering encryption, that means you're probably using customer data, you're using, you're considering things like business and GDPR, and maybe you're storing data for months, if not years at a time. And that's areas where encryption is very, very important. But if you haven't purchased your NAS drive yet, it's probably worth me telling you that different NAS brands handle encryption very, very differently. They, they, they handle encryption in three very different ways, and each one of them may make all the difference to your security protocols. So if we go for the lowest tier, we can talk about Synology, Asus Store, and Terramaster. That isn't to say these guys aren't safe. They are all tremendously safe brands, but all three of them choose to encrypt at the shared folder level. So what that means is the volume that you create and the system will have the standard protection of a login information, your username and password. But in, um, encryption can be done on a shared folder. That is an area of storage that you decide will be encrypted. But above that, you can't encrypt. So with these devices, the system resource impact of encryption is much, much lower because the only thing that's getting encrypted is the folder that all the data is in not the overall storage array and if that seems like enough for you bully for you definitely go for it but i know there's a number of businesses where that tier is not enough and shared folders being encrypted or bespoke you know folders within folders being encrypted is not enough which brings us to the next tier the qnap tier now the qnap tier there this is where not only can you encrypt shared folders but you can encrypt the whole volume this is the entire storage array of data you can encrypt and lock that data if you so choose which a number of you will consider a good middle ground it will have its impact on the storage and the system resources but not that much. And at the same time, it gives you a great coverage of encrypted data across the whole system. But there is, of course, one more tier that lots of top tier enterprise type companies, QSAN, HP, uh, and some of these other big, big rack mount NAS providers provide. And this is whole system encryption that require encrypted drives. These are devices where if you use SED drives, I believe, or F, um, IFE drives, I think they might be known as, um, these devices allow you to encrypt a shared folder, encrypt the volume, but also encrypt the entire system. So what that means is if someone comes along and turns on the system, there's the usual login, sure, but they need to have the encryption key just to boot your server which is the extra layer of protection that you're gonna need. Because if someone breaks into your building and steals your storage array, the last thing you want is for them to at least be able to get to the login screen, because at least then they can boot the device up. With SED drives and uh, NAS servers that support SE drives and their system-wide encryption, that encryption level is purely watertight. And because you can't strip an SED uh, you can't in, uh, strip the encryption from a disk without formatting the entire disk itself. It means this military-grade encryption is foolproof by compared to the other two standards. But again, you do pay big bucks for that. So just remember that the price of encryption and the um, the cost of encryption um, are uh, sorry. The price of encryption and the performance dip of encryption are not necessarily the same thing, with Synology being one of the more expensive NAS brands out there, but supporting folder level encryption, whereas QSAN, more expensive, but not that much more expensive, supporting that system-wide encryption settings. And ultimately, encryption, like most things in data, 
uh, whether it's the cost or the performance impact should never be measured by what you've got in your hands, the cost of the drives or the cost of your performance now. You should always think in terms of what am I going to lose if this data is lost? How much is it going to cost me to lose this data? How much is it going to cost my overall productivity to lose this data? data so remember always bear that in mind but thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this if you've got any questions about encryption in your setup do let me know in the comments below and don't forget to click like if you enjoyed this click subscribe to learn more about data and i'll see you next time